Good afternoon, my name is Alex from Swoosh English and welcome to today's class on reading skills. We're going to be focusing today on the skill of skimming. So welcome to all of you who are here in the class today. I can see that we've got a large number of participants, which is wonderful. Uh, so welcome to all of you. Let's see who we've got in the class today. So um, I can see we've got um, Florette. Hello to you, Florette. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, and Bijimon as well, good afternoon to you. And Amardeep, uh, good afternoon to you as well. Um, hello to Jose. Um, fantastic to see so many of you here. Hi, Michael, I hope you're well today. Let's see who else we've got coming in. And uh, Bhargav, hello to you. I hope you're well. Lishamol, great. Hi, hi. Great to see you in the class. Mai as well. Hello to you. And hello to Manasa, Sigitha, uh, Riswan, Sarija, Rashid. Um, happy Friday to you, uh, Florette, as well. Thank you for joining the class today. Hello to Jisha, Victorio, um, Christine, Nonye, and Saeed. Great to see so many of you here in the class today. Um, I hope that you get involved as usual. You always do. You're very active. You always participate and make these classes um, as interactive as possible. So I'm looking forward to more of the same. We are also broadcasting on Facebook as well. So um, I'm just going to have a look now to see who has joined us on the Facebook group. Please do share this video if you are watching on Facebook. We offer these classes as support for students, looking at tips, looking at different aspects of the OET exam. So the more that they're shared, the more people who get to see this, the more effective um, their, the video is going to be. So, um, so please do that. So just having a look at Facebook here, I can see we've got Hira, Suresh, um, Maria, Angelica, um, Koki as well. Hello to all of you. Um, my day is going pretty well so far, Koki. I hope your day is going well too. So great to see so many of you as well participating on Facebook. Hello as well to CJ. So um, fantastic then. A lot of you are here. I hope that you're ready to participate. Last week we looked at reading skills, detecting meaning from context. This week we're going to look at reading skills in terms of skimming. So skimming is a, a key word when it comes to reading, but it's not a word which is always completely understood. So I just want to get a sense, first of all, from everyone who's watching the video right now as to what you understand by the term skimming. What does it mean to skim a text? So let me know in the chat what you think in relation to that. It would be good to get some feedback in terms of what you understand the term skimming in the context of reading to refer to. So if you can give me some examples um, as to how you would skim a text, um, how might you approach it? What is, what is skimming? So um, let's see some of the suggestions that are coming through. So um, Sigitha um, and Cindy are focusing on sort of quick reading. Quick reading, quick search, look quickly, uh, quick look to uh, the meaning of the text, says Florette. Um, Saeed, reading for the main idea. Mahin is uh, overviewing. Good. Um, Jose talks about uh, finding uh, uh, summarized meaning. So um, some good suggestions there. Uh, Michael talks about reading keywords. Um, Manasa, grasping the information at a glance. Okay, so a lot of focus here then on reading quickly. Some of you are talking about keywords, some of you are talking about selective reading. Um, main idea is coming up a lot as well. Um, Shelley is talking about focusing on the main ideas and overviews um, is, is something which is being mentioned quite a lot. So, okay, so we've got some good ideas here. And also on Facebook, um, Alessa and uh, Jaya Prakesh are talking about quick looks, Hira, speedy reading. So again, on that sort of quick reading, um, CJ not reading the whole text. Good. Okay, so some good ideas here in terms of what skimming is. Um, so that what we've got here in terms of suggestions on Facebook and in terms of uh, those who are watching live on Zoom is a, a good summary. It is focusing on reading to get the main idea. And as you're reading to get the main idea, you should be reading 
quickly. You shouldn't be spending too long on specific parts of the text. So those who are talking about sort of keywords or selecting keywords, um, not so much. That's a different skill. That's more scanning. Skimming is about the global picture. It's about finding the main idea. So, so good for those who, are, who have made those suggestions. Those are good suggestions. And definitely, you shouldn't spend too long on skimming. It's something that you should be doing quite quickly with the text. So a next question then to start us off is um, why should we skim a text? What's the value of skimming? Why do we want to get the general idea? Why do we want to read quickly in order to get um, that sort of general context? Let me know what you think. What's the value of skimming? Reading to get the main idea. So we'll see what ideas come here. Um, so saving time, time pressure. Um, so Mai is saying, um, uh, Vida talks about prediction. Could be, yeah, there is an element of prediction with um, skimming to have an overview of the context, time management. Okay, so great. So time management is a key part, isn't it? Because the point of reading quickly is that for certain parts of the OET reading test, particularly uh, part A, but not just part A, the time is very limited. So we need to use reading skills, which enable us to use time as effectively as possible. So good, to get the idea quickly, to understand the main idea, um, says Michael, um, and yeah, Sam Amani talks about time management. Um, good, so some good suggestions here then as to why skimming is important. Um, yeah, time management is coming up um, a lot here. It is, a lot of it is about saving time, definitely. That's one of the key aspects of skimming. So um, some really important points then. So skimming is about reading a text to get the main overview, to get the gist of the text, the main idea. And the benefit is, is that it can help us save time. In this um, lesson, I'm now going to move on to look at some of the specific ways that we can skim a text that will help us to do those things. So we can extract useful information, but we can do so as quickly as possible. So let's have a look now then at some of the specific ways that we can skim a text in order to save time. So um, the title for this class is um, Tips for Improving Global Reading Skills. So global reading basically is skimming. It's reading for the overall context, the main idea. So by way of an introduction then, um, the skill of skimming is really important in the context of the OET because for part A particularly, you have to read expeditiously or in other words, quickly. You also would be wise to do this for the text in parts B and C as well because for the number of questions that you have to answer, you only get on average about two minutes per question for parts B and C. And for part A, you only get about 45 seconds per question. So the time for the reading section is very limited when it comes to the number of questions that you have to answer. Being able to skim successfully then will save you time in the exam and allow you to begin to immediately interact with the texts in a meaningful manner. It's a skill worth developing, but how can we skim successfully in the OET section? And what exactly should skim reading consist of? So here we're gonna look at some practical tips to help to improve our competence in this area. So the first thing then when it comes to skimming is you wanna begin with the headings. The headings of a text will give you a lot of information. They'll tell you what the text is about, and also they'll begin to orientate you towards the informa information you should expect to appear in the text. So if we have a look at this heading for reading part A, um, here is an example. You can see uh, technique for plaster back slab for arm fractures. So what would you expect to read about in this text? What information would you expect to occur within this text? What do you think? 
So just let me know in the chat what you think based on this heading, what information would you expect to appear in a text like this? So let's see. So uh, Mai is talking about um, steps. Uh, Shen, how to do the specific procedure. Absolutely. Um, methods of the uh, back slab, says Saeed. Um, and uh, Techno says uh, steps as well. Um, yeah, Bargov talks about for arm fractures techniques for slab application. Yeah, okay, good. So lots of, lots of good suggestions there in terms of what we would expect to appear in this text. Um, also in, in Facebook, uh, Rini's talking about the procedure, uh, Jaya Prakesh talking about the procedure for the back slab as well. So these are the things that we would expect to come up in a text which had this as the title. So it's good then to be able to get this information. Naturally, we would expect a set of instructions or procedures, um, hence the word technique. You would also expect to read about particular materials involved in the construction of the back slab. On top of this, you should expect references to joints, fractures, and positions in which the arm should be placed or maintained due to the arm fractures mentioned in the title. All of this gives you important information which you can use to answer the matching questions in part A. So just from looking at this title, you should be able to identify it as the text which will provide information on the procedure to follow when splinting a fractured limb. And that's one of the questions for part A. Which text gives you information on the procedure to follow when splinting a fractured limb? Just from looking at the title, you should be pretty confident about being able to answer that question. And if you can do this, you would have been able to answer one of the questions from the reading paper, and you will have done it in mere seconds spent reading. So saving that time just by looking at the headings to answer those first uh, seven questions, the first seven questions are always the matching questions, can really save you so much time. So that's the first thing that you do when you skim. Have a look at the title in order to get the overall idea of the text. The next thing that you can do when it comes to skimming is pay attention to the layout of the text. So it's not just about what the text says when it comes to skimming, it's also about what the text looks like. The layout refers to basically the way that the text is structured. Is it written in full developed paragraphs or is it written using bullet points, for example? Or is it presented in a table or a graph-like format? Noting the layout of the text will help you decide, A, what sort of text it is, and B, where you will need to read in future in order to find specific information. So when you look at the text for its general layout, its overview, you might look at it and think, okay, so this part of the text is gonna provide information about this, that part of the text is gonna provide information about something else. Looking at the overall layout will help you to orientate yourself in terms of where you need to look in the text if you need specific information for, for the questions which will follow later on in the exam. So let's have a look at the layout then of the text which we can see on the screen now. Um, text A. What can we see from this layout? Well, we've got um, three words which are in bold type. And then you can see that you have a sentence um, and there is following the bold type. And then there are some bullet points as well underneath the, the first sentence we have. So what does this indicate to you? bold type, then a sentence following the bold type. What, what kind of information do you think this text contains? Just based on the layout, the bold type, and then a sentence following the bold type. So not actually spending much time reading, but just looking at the layout. Okay, fantastic. So we're getting some really good suggestions um, from Josefina, um, Shen, um, Hewa, and Kolpo. Yeah, all of you are saying, and uh, Abidemi as well, all of you are saying definitions. And um, that's exactly what I would expect to see as well from that layout. The bold type, and then straight away you've got a sentence following that bold type. You would expect that to be definitions, wouldn't you? The information in bold, you would think would be the word that is being defined. And then the sentence that follows it would be the explanation, the definition of that word in bold type. So just from looking at that, you would be able to then answer a question in terms of uh, deciding uh, which text, imagine in part A you had the question, which text provides information about the definitions relating to different types of fractures? So you could look at that text and just from the layout, you might say, you know what, 
this looks like a layout which is providing definitions, I think I'm going to choose that as the answer. Now, you might look at the layout and you can see the layout in, in a split second. It takes less than a second to notice the layout. So you might give yourself just a little bit more time, just have a quick skim, okay, and then make the decision in terms of deciding this is the one which is providing definitions on different types of fractures. But the point is, is that what you're looking at is not just the words, you're looking at the way that the text is organized. You're looking at the layout. Is it bullet pointed? Does it have bold type? Or is it organized in a different way? So now let's have a look at a different text, which is organized quite differently. How is this text organized differently? What about the layout can you tell me, which is different to the text that we looked at previously? What can you see here? How could you describe this layout? Okay. So now we're looking at, um, so tables, absolutely. It's in a table, isn't it? It's in a tabular format. So here you can see it's got a tabular layout and you should expect there to be numerical information presented. Often within a table, you're gonna find numerical information. A quick skim of the table shows that the focus is on the drug morphine and the strengths and dosages involved under different scenarios. So you're just sort of quickly uh, looking at the table. Uh, it's a table layout. Yep, you should expect there to be some tabular information. Okay, very quickly, you can see the drug focused on is, is morphine. Um, okay, great. Really quick skimming then of this information. And then we can get quite a lot of information just from looking at it very quickly. Um, great, Rashid is talking about, yeah, it's a painkiller and its description, and it's all presented in a tabular format um, on uh, Facebook as well, Sandy um, and Alessa, both um, recognizing that tabular format. So we notice that straight away, just from noticing that format, that gives us information about what the text will contain. So from observing the above layouts in this way, you should be able to answer the question as to which text provides information about the procedures for delivering pain relief, and which text provides information on the terms used to describe different types of fractures? Which do you think provides information on which? So um, here we are from the layout of the text. Which text? Is it A? Remember the first text we looked at was text A, and this text is text C. So which text? A or C provides information on procedures for delivering pain relief, and which text provides information on the terms used to describe different types of fractures? So what do you think? For procedures, is that A or C? Let me know in the chat. A or C for procedures for delivering pain relief. Okay, so almost everyone there is saying C for the first one. Cindy, Colpo, Josefina, um, Ali, is saying C, Abidemi is saying A, um, Rio, um, Jalila, C, so almost everybody, okay, Abidemi has uh, gone to C, so almost everybody is saying C, let's have a quick look in Facebook, um, and lots of C's coming up here as well, Anita, Ajitha, um, saying C, Hira is saying C as well, Suresh, okay, um, so lots of C's coming up um, here then for that first question. Um, procedures for delivering pain relief. And so in that case, then the terms used to describe different types of fractures, what do we think for that then? Is that A? Do we think that that is A? What do we think for the terms used for describing different types of fractures? Okay, yes. Lots of you here are saying A for, for that. Um, Samani, for example. Um, Olu was, uh, Uluwasei also is saying A. Okay, so Lishamol is asking, where are the texts? Remember, uh, Lishamol, the texts are what we looked at um, just before. So this is text A, <clears throat> and this is text C. And this, this is what the questions are referring to. Uh, just have a quick look in Facebook just to see if we agree here. Uh, Sandy, Anita, Ajitha, Hira, all saying A. Fantastic. So absolutely. Um, that is the answer. So these are part A questions. Which text provides procedures for delivering pain relief? The answer is C. Which text provides the terms used to describe different types of fractures? And the answer is A. So well done if you put those answers and almost everybody did. Of course, terms is a synonym for definitions. So if we recognize the text looked like a text which was providing definitions, then we could have answered that question correctly. So um, well done. Um, for those of you participating there. So the final tip that we're going to look at today then when it comes to um, skimming 
is about topic sentences. So topic sentences, um, what are topic sentences? Well, basically topic sentences um, are those sentences which are usually used at the beginning of a paragraph of a text and which essentially announce what the topic of the paragraph is going to be. So this tip applies particularly to part C of the reading exam because the texts are longer and therefore they're likely to exhibit more examples of this organizing feature. So for each of the texts in part C of the reading exam, you usually have about six or seven paragraphs. Each of those paragraphs should include a topic sentence. So it can be helpful to approach part C text in this way as skimming through the first sentence of each paragraph is a great way to acquaint yourself with the topic of the article as well as getting a sense of the sorts of arguments and opinions the article will contain. What this will do is to help you to make sense of the text as a whole and it will also make the process of approaching the questions easier. So one of the benefits of skimming is not just the fact that it helps you read the text more quickly, that is definitely a benefit, but another benefit is it helps you make sense of the texts more quickly. So if you're there trying to read everything in detail, that takes a long time, you don't have much time when it comes to answering the questions, and by the time you've read everything in detail and then you look at the questions, you might realize actually that you've run out of time. You don't have enough time to answer the questions. But if you're just skimming through the topic sentences, it gives you a good idea in terms of what the topic of the sex is, uh, the topic of the text is rather. It gives you an idea to start using your own background knowledge. So you can think, oh, I know something about this. You can start to make sense of the themes more quickly than you would do if you were reading in detail. You skim through it, you look at the topic sentences, and then you start to answer the questions. And once you start to answer the questions, you can go into a little bit more detail as required. So I always recommend to skim the texts um, for, um, for all of the sections, but particularly for part C, skim the text first, uh, you get a good idea of the text, then you can start to, to look at um, the paragraphs in more detail um, as the second stage of answering the questions. So here we are then. So looking at um, the information on the screen at the moment, I want you to, to tell me if you can identify what the topic of the text is from the following topic sentences. So some of you were already giving suggestions, which is fantastic. Um, and you can see you've got three topic sentences here um, from the text from paragraphs one, two, and four. So what do you think? I'll just give you a little bit more time then to suggest what you think the topic of the text uh, might be based on these topic sentences. Okay, so we've got um, insomnia, um, says Amar Deep sleep disorder, uh, says Techno uh, Kanwal. Um, do we always get headings for each paragraph in the original text? Um, not always. You will get headings for the text in paragraph C. Yes, you'll get headings for those. Um, and for most of the text in paragraph, um, sorry, in parts A and B, for most of those texts, you will get headings. But sometimes you'll have something uh, more similar to what we looked at when it said the dislocations, the sprains, and the fractures. So you'll get like that bold type and then you'll get a definition. So not all of the, the texts in parts A and B will have headings, but most of them will. If they do have headings, you can approach it in that way. Otherwise, we can use some of the other techniques that we're, we're looking at today. But definitely for part C, both of the texts will have headings. Okay, so great. So uh, diff difficulties in sleeping is, uh, Jose says, Asar talks about sleep. Um, uh, and... Um, We've also got Saeed talks about sleep patterns. Manasseh talks about the effects of, uh, of sleep on the health of humans. So some great suggestions coming up here. Um, in the Facebook group, uh, great to see that you're sharing. Fantastic to see that you're sharing this video. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So from the topic sentences that we have on the screen in front of us here, we can see that the article focuses on the topic of sleep and what the effects are of sleep deprivation, the effects on our health. There is also a strong focus on sleep research, and there is a repeated reference to the past indicating that there have been changes or developments in the medical understanding of this topic over time. So having these broader ideas in your mind will provide you with an appropriate context for making sense of the questions, which you will have to subsequently address. And there are quite a few ideas which come out of that just from looking at the topic sentences. So, in terms of a summary then of the uh, techniques we've looked at in the class, 
Um, start with the headings. If you've got a heading, that's the best thing to go to. It gives you an overall idea of the text. You can start using your background knowledge and you can even start answering some of the questions, particularly for part A, just from looking at the headings of the text. So start with that. If the text doesn't have a heading or if you need um, to skim a little bit further, look at the layout of the text. Straight away when you look at the text, there's so much information provided when it comes to the layout. Is it a table? If it's a table, it's probably going to have numerical information. If it has bullet points, it's probably looking at procedures um, and uh, ways of, of approaching a particular, particular topic. If it's bold type and then it's followed by a sentence, it's probably looking at definitions. So pay attention to the layout. And then, um, particularly when it comes to the longer text for part C, read through the topic sentences. The topic sentences will give you a lot of information about the article. It will help you to make use of your background knowledge and then you'll be in a better position to start dealing with the more specific detail uh, which will follow in the questions. So as usual, we're gonna do a little bit of practice in order to put some of these principles uh, into practice. I think we just lost. The presentation there. I'm just going to get back. Just do one more. Here we are. So, a bit of um, in the following next and I want you to tell. Okay. So already we've got some suggestions coming in. And this is key because the key is it's all about speed, isn't it? So paracetamol and its side effects. Fantastic. That's a good summary. Um, paracetamol uh, uses and the effects of paracetamol. Good. Okay. So basically, yeah. So this text is going to be about paracetamol, isn't it? Um, and definitely, yes. Yeah, side effects is... Uh, uh, is a, a big part of uh, a big part of it, uh, as you say, um, the effects of it, um, and its interaction as well. So you can see here we've actually got three headings. So it gives us the overall heading right at the start, and then it breaks it down a little bit afterwards. Um, so the next question then: What do we notice about the layout of the text? Remember the layout in terms of how it's organised. What can you tell me about that? What information do we gather from the text layout? Okay, so um, Abigail notices that it's bold. So we've got the bold text at the beginning. Um, so we've got these subheadings, haven't we? That's what the bold text is telling us. Also, um, the bullet points as well. Um, Shendi is talking about that. So particularly with 4.5. So straight away from looking at the layout, it tells us about the, the way that the information is being presented. So with the bullet points then, each bullet point represents a different drug. And so if we need to find out about a specific drug, just from, from seeing the way it's organized in terms of bullet points, we know which part of the text we're going to need to look at, where we're going to need to go to in order to find information. So absolutely, yes. Subheadings and bullet points really helps us um, direct us towards where we need to go in the text when, when, it, when it comes to answering some of those questions where you have to find a specific word or phrase. If we know what the layout of the text is, that's really going to help us in terms of being able to go there. Um, Jaya Prakesh um, is talking about bullet points and subheadings as well in the Facebook group. Um, absolutely, Jaya uh, Prakesh. And also Hira uh, mentions uh, the overall text in terms of uh, interactions as well. Um, so that's great. Let's have a quick look now at um, text um, two. We've got text B here. So same questions. Um, what is this text about? And also, um, what do you notice about the layout of this text? Okay. Let's see. Okay, so great. So now we're looking at a flow chart, aren't we? Um, so the topic is, it's about overdose, but what about the overdose? There's, there's a key aspect. Good, the procedure. That's the key, isn't it? It's the procedure in relation to overdose. Um, and we also have this flow chart organization. So with the fact that we've got this flow chart organization, we again should expect something in terms of numbers, of reference to numbers as one of the organizing principles. And also there's gonna be the way that the text is organized, the procedure and the steps. We've got, okay, so step one, and then it takes us here. 
And if this is the information, so if it's, um, in this case, less than four hours, we go here. If it's four to eight hours, we go here. So it's really helping us in terms of knowing where in the text we need to look in order to find spe uh, the specific information. So remember, when we're, when we're skimming, we're looking at the text as a whole. But when we look at the layout of the text, what that tells us is, is how the text is organized. So later on, this is going to be a text from part A. Uh, so later on, we know, OK, this is where I will need to look in order to find specific information. We've skimmed the text. We've looked at the overall layout. We have a good idea in terms of how that text is organized. That's really going to help us get to that specific information later on in the, uh, when it comes to answering the questions in the exam. Um, in the Facebook group as well, we've got some great suggestions. Um, Chris is talking about it being a chart. Um, Hira mentions it being a flow chart. Uh, Sandy, um, it's the overdose procedures. So yes, absolutely. Um, that's what we've got, isn't it? When we look at the, um, the heading and also when we look at the layout, we can pick up a lot of useful information about the text as well. So now I want you to answer this question. Which text would you expect to provide information on A, the number of products containing paracetamol, and B, the steps to be taken when treating a paracetamol overdose patient? Okay, so what do you think? So remember, we've got uh, text A is the first text, and text B is the second text. So when it comes to the number of products containing paracetamol, what do we think? Text A or text B? Um, and for B, the steps to be taken when treating a paracetamol overdose patient, what do we think? Text A or text B. So looking at text A, first of all, then the number of products containing paracetamol, let's have a look at what we've got. Um, so we've got um, A says Said, um, Canwell says B is in text two. Um, so we've got, um, let's see, so A, A, A and B. So the order is A and B. Um, Amar Deep is saying A and B. Florette, A, B. Um, Jess Miller, A, B as well. Uh, Abigail saying the same. Srija is saying 1A, 2B. Um, okay. So, so almost everyone then saying A and B um, in, the, uh, in the Zoom chat, which is, which is good. Okay, it's good that we've got so much agreement. Uh, do we agree in the Facebook group? So um, Ajitha is saying B for B. Um, and uh, Jaya Prakash is saying second B. So it looks like we've got agreement here then. And you would be absolutely correct in terms of the um, answers that you've given because the number of products containing paracetamol would be what we'd expect to see when it comes to this sort of text because it's talking about contraindications and interactions. So contraindications and interactions, well, yeah, it's important to know which products are containing paracetamol to see which ones are going to have those contraindications uh, and interactions. And particularly for, for, for text B, the procedure for acute single overdose, well, the procedure is a synonym basically for the steps to be taken, isn't it? Any procedure is going to follow specific steps. So just from having a look at those headings, we could have answered those questions. And those are two questions from the official practice OET test um, for part A. So really quick reading, really quick skimming. You look at the headings, you've got a good idea, have a quick look at the layout, and then straight away you can start answering some of these questions. So you're saving lots of time when it comes to answering the questions in the OET exam. And that's really important because time is limited. Just a final bit of practice then. Um, I want you now to have a look at the topic sentences for the first four paragraphs taken from um, an OET part C text. What do you think the main topic of the text is and what other aspects do you expect the text to focus on based on the information given in the topic sentences? So just very quickly then, have a look at the topic sentences. You've got four topic sentences here on the screen um, and then let me know in the chat what you think the topic of the text is going to be. Okay, so we've got some um, suggestions coming in already, which is great. Keep them coming, keep your suggestions coming in. Okay, so Axe you're saying with sort of parts B and C, this is um, a key tip for um, part C, looking at the topic sentences um, is really important in terms of getting an overall idea of the text and beginning to make sense of the text. So um, ADHD clearly is, um, is a major topic um, here. Um, and that's what everyone is picking up on so far. Absolutely. Yep. 
So, so clearly, yeah. So from looking at these topic sentences, then we, we are picking up on a lot of information in relation to ADHD. Okay, and also um, Canwell is picking up on the fact that it's um, relating to age as well. Good, absolutely. Age is a key part of this as well. So yeah, ADHD and also how it relates to age. Good, good to see you picking up on that. Um, that's a really good observation as well. Um, so just a little bit of, um, of feedback then on this. We, we've, we've picked up um, a lot of that. But um, yeah, the main topic then is ADHD. Um, other aspects you could have picked up from those topic sentences, um, the age when ADHD develops, who is most likely to develop it, so um, the characteristics of those who develop ADHD, whether it is a real condition or not, because it says that ADHD is controversial and a lot of studies have gone into ADHD, so that's a really important part of it, and also the history and the current research which has taken place into the condition. So just from looking at those topic sentences then, there's a lot of information we can pick up on in terms of what this article is about. You only need to spend 30 seconds, uh, maximum one minute, just quickly skimming through those topic sentences, and already you've got a really good idea as to what the text is about, and that's gonna help to orientate you in terms of answering those questions. So um, that brings us to the end of the class today then. Thank you very much as usual for all of your participation. Um, I hope you found the tips useful and put them into practice. The next time you do one of the um, OET mock exams, we have um, OET mock exams with Swoosh English, uh, which you can look at, which you can practice. Put these tips into practice. Have a quick skim um, of the text before you start answering the questions. It will really help you. It will save time. It will help to orientate you towards the topic of the text and it will help you make much more sense of the, of the text as well when it comes to um, answering the questions. So uh, put it into practice. Have a look at this video again to review some of those tips. If there's anything that you want to look at and, and double check, the class will be released so that you can have a look at that again. Thanks for all of those who have shared the class as well, um, because it gives as many people as possible the opportunity to, to have a look at it and to um, potentially benefit as well from um, the, uh, the tips that we've looked at together. So um, just as a final thing then, before I go, um, in terms of um, those of you who want to um, get more help like this from us at Swoosh English, who want to get further involved with us at Swoosh English, um, I'm just going to bring up some information now in terms of the different packages that we, that we offer, as usual, which you can uh, have a, a look at um, and, um, and hopefully which you will find will be useful in supporting you in terms of passing your exams and going on and achieving your OET dreams. Um, so I'm just going to bring some information up on that um, now. Cindy is wishing good luck to everyone. Absolutely. Um, I echo those sentiments completely. Good luck to all of you who are um, taking your exams because some of you got your exams coming up in just a week's time. So really the best of luck to all of you um, and to the rest of you as well um, who have got your exams coming up soon. Um, absolutely the best of luck. Um, this is a, a really important moment, I know, for so many of you. So um, I, hope it, I hope it goes exactly as you want it to go. So um, here is some information I'm just going to bring up now. Sorry, just be one moment. Okay. Okay, so um, here we are. So with the, with the OET packages that we offer, um, they start from $49, just $49. And you can see there's a lot that are included um, within all of these packages. Right from the starter package, you can see um, there's a lot that, that we've got that is, that is offered to you. Um, right from self-study uh, video courses, all the way to um, access to uh, reading and listening mock exams, which is going to give you lots of practice when it comes to the OET. Um, and we also offer um, unlimited packages um, going all the way up to our VIP package, which will provide you with a lot of intense support when it comes to um, the OET exam, um, from live group classes to 
to one-to-one -one classes as well. So if you've got specific questions, specific needs, um, specific uh, issues when it comes to the OET exam, then we, we can deal with that and we can help you and provide you with lots of, uh, of support. Um, with the, uh, with the answer bank, um, Florette is asking questions about the answer bank. What that is, is basically it's um, looking at um, letters which would be graded at um, a level A when it comes to the OET or B. So letters that would be basically um, model answers where um, if you were to write those responses, you would get you know, the highest grade when it comes to the OET. So you have, um, you'll have access to that. And so you can look at what some examples would be of some um, really sort of top quality responses to the letters. And, um, and those have been written as well by um, native OET uh, teachers. So um, you can have a look at those. Um, so uh, Mandarin is asking about the mock exam. So that we, we're not allowed to actually um, produce the, the past papers from the, the OET exam itself, but we have devised exams which are based on the exact strategies, the exact same principles, the exact same formats, and the exact same question types that you will find in the OET exam. So it's really good practice to engage in those mock exams. So um, thank you again for all of your participation, and um, I hope to see you again in future classes, and um, I look forward to seeing you on board with Swoosh in the future. So take care and uh, see you next time.